Perfect stuff there, guys. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 guys. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, obviously, all coming in. We'll just give everybody a, a couple of minutes before we get uh, get into it and get started. It's like when you have a real life conference and everyone kind of like shuffles in and avoids sitting near the front, but we can. Uh, yeah, everyone wants to look too right keen. Now. <laughs> Perfect stuff. But no, it's all good. Thank you guys for for say for joining us. Um, you know, I'm very aware, kind of in the in the current situation, you know, taking potentially an hour out of your diary, uh, you know, is is hard. Um, so really appreciate obviously giving giving us your time. I was obviously I said no pressure for Dan and I to make sure it's worth your while now as well. <laughs> so we want to make sure it's a, it's a good session for you guys. We we'll just wait I'd for say a couple more. Pressure on you than me, to be fair. No pressure <laughs> on me. We'll pressure yeah, no, on so you. My part, you're just invited. That's the, that's the way we work it. I'm just the backing dancers. That's it. That's it. I'll be Beyonce, mate. You be the uh, you be the other two. I'll take that. <laughs> Amazing guys. Excellent stuff. Okay, well, yeah, I think we'll we'll, uh, we'll get things going. Um, you know, kind of conscious of uh, make sure we've got the hour for everybody. Um, so yeah, obviously, thank you so much for joining us. As I said, you know, really appreciate you coming on, coming online, guys, and and, and listening to Dan and I. Uh, you know, the reason for the webinar is is Dan and I are going to actually cover off some features that we've been working with, kind of within Microsoft 365 stack. So that's obviously looking within Teams. That's looking within Windows 10. They've really helped us when we're working, kind of during this you know COVID 19 situation. Um, we hope that the benefit to everybody attending the call or watching this back, you know, at a later date is for us to be able to actually um, illustrate these features. You know, we're going to live demo some things. And is that the idea is that all these features are actually for end users to make use of. So, you know, it's the idea being is that end users can implement these. You know, it's not a big complex rollout of big, large policies and security features kind of things. The idea is it's, it's some short, sharp tips and tricks is, what, is why we called it this. Um, you know, and we hope that obviously if you if you're an IT manager or kind of on this on this call, the idea is that obviously you can share this with your team, you know, your colleagues and um, with you know your, your other end users afterwards, you know, share the content that we're delivering today so that they can make use of those as well. And I think it's a big thing, you know, you know, sharing is caring, so pass this information on. Um, I think very much that you know, me and Dan have had this conversation, but we're, we're all fenced, you know, facing these sort of unprecedented times, and although obviously many organizations are probably getting you know with the new government like guidelines that have come out they're kind of getting their staff back into the office you know working on their returning to the office policies so although kind of we've made use of these tips during the working from home scenario it's kind of just building that in as a, as a, as a relative for you um but all these tips and tricks you know are going to be transferred when you get back into the office as well um because you know a lot of people do work with other departments other colleagues um, and a lot of these features will, will, will still work in that way Exactly. Yeah, and I think you're hitting the nail on the head there is that yeah, there's so many little tips and things that people can do with Windows 10, um, whether you're working um, from home, whether you're kind of using the office products to do it as well. Um, they're just to make you more productive. And, and I think as we go through it today, you can really see that there's just a few little things that you can actually will either A, genuinely save you a lot of time or B, save you a lot of time in the processes you do. You know, it'll actually be a bit more streamlined, especially working with other people. So exciting yeah. times, exciting times. <laughs> And I think exactly from from yeah from my and Dan's perspective, it was there was a lot of things in kind of even the Windows 10 stack that I wasn't aware of. So I think it's one of those things because Windows 10, you know, it's the evergreen operating system. Um, you know, I wasn't aware of so there's so much stuff integrated into it. So that's kind of what we want to share with you today. So if I go on to uh, on to the next one here, um, so yeah, kind of the intros today. Uh, what's well, so the agenda? Sorry for today. M myself and Dan will obviously just give you guys some introductions to who we are and why we feel we can talk about this. Um, we'll then kind of dive into the main main element of this is, is kind of Dan showing us some of these features in, in a live demo environment. And we're going to cover off some things within productivity, collaboration and communication around Teams, some of the win things within Windows 10 security features. I'll do then do kind of the section on the cloud solution provider, which is basically the Microsoft licensing element of it. And, and then questions. Yeah, so with questions, guys, we've actually got people on the line that can answer questions as we go. Um, rather than saving them all to the end and then you, we sit here whilst you furiously type them in, please ask questions as we go. Um, and then we will obviously cover them cover them off if, if somebody can on, on the chat. And if we can't, then obviously we'll, we'll go into further clarification at the end of those. Um, so I guess, yeah, kind of on, on, on this side, Dan, you know, I've got this lovely little holding slide of demos. Um, and it's obviously very much about this is sharing screens, things like that. So I'm just going to pass over to you 
Thank you, Raj. Should we introduce each other first? Should we, should we oh, introduce yeah. ourselves? Yeah. We there we go. Let's, let's diving in. Yeah. Everyone's wondering, who, who are these people? So, uh, yeah, Dan, you do yours first, mate. Go on. Well, um, so my name's Dan. Um, I'm one of the master trainers here for Microsoft on the commercial team. Um, so it's my job to kind of be fluent in every single part of the Microsoft journey, along from uh, Windows, from Office, right the way up to Server and Azure and everything like that. So I work with um, XMA quite a lot, and, and you know we support a lot of events, and we engage with you know, partners and users, and, and really kind of bring the Microsoft proposition to life. So that's my job, and that's who I am. Who are you? Yeah, perfect stuff. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm James Thurgood. I'm the, the XMA CSP Software Business Manager. Eight years of working, you know, with, along with licensing within Microsoft. Uh, and my main role is to really advise our customers on best practices to not only optimize their licenses, estates, but also so that they can provide the right kind of technology to, to their end users. Um, and I like to get in it with that without ever overpaying. So my big thing is about actually only pay for what you need when you need it and, and focus in on the technology for the, for the end user profiles. Fantastic. Right. I am going to. Uh, so hopefully you can see my screen at the moment. You can see a background on. Is that correct? Now I'm going to turn my webcam off just because I'm noticing my latency is uh, ping a little bit low. So I don't want to. Uh, let me turn that off for two seconds. So you're able to see now. We've broken today up into to three kind of sections. We'll do over the next 25 minutes, half an hour, um, and that's productivity, collaboration, and security. Okay. So we're going to start off with productivity. Um. Now, James, you still with me? Yeah, perfect there, mate. Honestly, I think those things we said, you know, yeah. the thing about productivity is us for uh, kind of sharing our desktops. So I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, sorry, it went really quiet then. I had a sudden panic that I'd lost and I was just talking to myself. But um, no, so there's a couple of things that Windows 10 has, uh, have got built in um, and a couple of little tools that people might see every day but don't actually use every day. And one of the biggest ones we actually have is something called Timeline. Now, Timeline is the little logo that sits at the bottom down here. Um, it's actually called Task View. But if I was to click on this, what this does is it brings up all the applications like Excel sheets. Um, I've got a Teams chat, I've got my Spotify, um, and everything like that. And if I was to click on one of these, it opens it straight up for me. So I can kind of go all, all through the things there and then open up whatever application I want. That's kind of like a zoom out view, and you can just have that, that one window. Because sometimes, especially working from home, if you've got PowerPoint, you've got Excels, Teams, and everything else, gets a bit kind of like convoluted on the screen and just having that easy management view from from there it is quite handy to have you find yourself working on lots of items you know i think that's the thing you know lots of people will will have lots of things on the go at the same time so just making sure that they can go back and get into them i think it's a big thing exactly yeah you know like i was saying you know this is quite a tame view in the sense that we've got office uh sorry we've got a web page we've got teams and a couple of excel sheets open and that's it um, but normally I'll have Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Teams, emails, Outlooks, WhatsApps, everything. There's everything on there at all. Um, and actually having all those windows on there open, being able just to zoom out quickly, click on what I need, really helpful. And I think, do you use that much when you're working as well? Yeah, I think from my perspective, I think it would be the next thing you, you, we show the guys was actually the fact that you can roll back in time. I think that's a huge thing. Yeah. That, again, like what document was I working on two days ago? What, what was the website I was looking at? So I think that's a real thing for me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, like I say, you've got the kind of the zoomed out view here that you can see on the screen. But actually, if I scroll down, you start getting a day before 40 days actually instead. Today, the start of the looking back. May, if I click on this, it straight up for me so again it will locate the file so if i knew that i was working on a file with someone um on the 15th of may for example i can go back to the 15th of may and it will come up on there if i know that i was website or i was looking at everything if you've got a day when you've done a lot of things like here for example um on the 11th of may there was 20 activities and if i click on those 20 activities we go through and actually do nine o'clock in the morning. I was looking at this at 10 o'clock. I was looking at this working on this PowerPoint. Uh, sorry, this Photoshop. So you can go through and again, all I have to do is if I want to open this file back up, I click it and it opens it straight up for me. Yeah, and it's just a really handy thing. I mean, I don't know if you use that much in your office at the moment, Jade, but what I found is working from home and um, normally in the office, I can turn around and I can literally just ask someone to say, what were we working on or where did we save that file or did you send it to me whereas now i can literally just go back to the exact date and time it's really handy yeah it's a classic as you said just having that historical timeline 
but being able to go back and, and see what you were working on when you were working on it, I think is very important as well. Yeah, um, and the other thing on that as well is, I don't know if, if you noticed on the top, um, much like on multiple desktops at any one time. So for example, at the moment, I've got desktop one, which is again, on this one, just for ease of use, um, I will have, so it can recognize that that is desktop one. Now, if I'm sharing my screen like I am now, I've got the because actually what you have is, you know, you've got emails popping up, you could have Teams messages popping up and everything else that's going on. You want to make sure that when you're actually sharing your screen and you're presenting, you don't want to be showing something on the screen that you don't want to be seen. For example, you know, if you're talking to an end user or a customer, you don't want another customer's data coming up. You don't want your supplier prices coming up. And there's a really cool way that you can actually do this. You can shield yourself against only having one thing shared at any one time. So all I have to do is click on the task button, uh, task button at the bottom, um, and then I can click on two or desktop three. If I click on desktop two, it's up a new desktop. I hit PowerPoint. I've got a point. Um, means is that if I just want to share this PowerPoint uh, presentation and nothing else on there, all I have to do is go onto there and click on desktop to but the, the Excels are. So James, I know I know we've talked a few times about sharing screens and things like that. Um, and there's been a couple of times I've shared some screens with you and emails have popped up, you know, and actually from a customer's point, that could be quite damaging, right? Or there could be data you don't want other people to see. Yeah, no, definitely. I think I think just as you said, like Often, I know, you know, kind of within teams, um, you can share certain just maybe programs, but then that's quite annoying when you're then like, and you want to yeah. show something else you have to come out of it. Whereas I think, as you say, just almost sandboxing yourself, just having a completely brand new blank desktop that you know if you're sharing that, what you know, with a customer or with a, even even internally, you know, with, with colleagues, um, it's working that way. So it's good. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, you definitely hit the nail on the head there. Um, and the other thing as well is, you know, for me, this is kind of like a demo PC that I'm using at the moment. So there's not too much stuff on there. Um, but for my actual, um, my work laptop, I'm, I'm at different customer sites all the time. So what I do is I almost set up a different desktop for a different customer. So it means that I don't have to worry about anything else popping up. You know, if, I, if, if I'm with you, for example, I've got all the stuff relevant to you. But then if I go to one of our OEMs, for example, I, well, I don't want OEMs seeing what I talk about with you and I don't want you seeing what I talk about with the OEMs. So you can almost just, like I say, set up the different um, desktops and have completely customized everything. Could be really handy for some customers or some end users on the, on the line. Now, uh, along this as well, and I'm going to whiz through this because uh, we've got quite a lot of stuff we want to cover. Uh, and I'm quite cautious that I don't want to run out of time for this. Um, working from home has challenges itself. Right, you know, and challenges can actually be just being staying up to date with everything that's going on. Because I don't know about you, James, I am busier than I've ever been, and I mean to <laughs> I the point where you know, everyone, everyone obviously can get hold of pretty much anybody at any time. I think that's a big thing. You know, people are you know always on. You know, it is you wake up, you're potentially working where you're working from. Um, yeah, so I, I, I completely agree, and I think there's there's lots of different ways for people to be able to get hold of you now. It is on Teams. It could be email. It could be through LinkedIn. Oh. Um, Teams, LinkedIn, you know, if you're using Zoom, you use Zoom. If you've got Skype for business, if you've got emails, if you've got instant messaging, then if you've got WhatsApp, text, your phone, everything that goes on. Um, sometimes, you know, and especially if you're working um, from home, you, you may have kids, you may have sort of family stuff you need to do. You know, a lot of people that we work with don't do now their normal hours of nine till five. They might do nine till 11 and then two till seven. Or they might have the morning off to look after the kids and then do work in the afternoon and the evening. And one of the biggest things I struggle with is just finding out what I've missed out on. You know, if I pop out, if I just go for a walk for an hour, just a lunchtime and I come back, well, I've literally got to sit and click every single application that I've got open. You know, Teams, Skype, uh, Outlook. Have I missed anything in office.com? Have I missed any notifications there? Well, how can we see everything that's going on? Well, actually, in the bottom right-hand corner, you've got a little notification tab. And if I click on this, this shows every single thing that I've missed while I've been away. And that'll be Edge um, Edge browser. So my Edge browser notifications, um, it'll come through from my personal mail, come through from my OneDrive, uh, from Teams, from emails, everything like that. So with one little uh, click on there, I can see everything that's going on. Now from there, what I can do is if I go manage notifications, um, you dig down and say what you want notifications from. You know, so I could turn it off from everything apart from WhatsApp and Edge, or I could turn it on for Dropbox, for example. So again, just a nice little way of seeing it, you know, our mobile devices, every mobile device has it. You swipe down from the top menu and you can see everything that you missed out on. 
And actually the other thing is that when we're hyper involved and like super like built in something like we are now, actually I might miss all my team stuff coming up. I might miss the emails that are coming in. So every now and then just have a little click on the, the, the button down there for the, for the notifications, just sets you right up. Brilliant stuff. I, I think yeah. I can see here as well that one of the nice ones you're gonna, gonna cover off with the guys, which is something that I've been using a lot of, obviously coming back from a office environment where potentially we had dual screens and a lot of people are now probably working either on laptops, which obviously a smaller screen, um, you know, I think the, the snap feature, which I know you're about to demonstrate kind of now for us is, is a big thing for me. So obviously snaps the capability of being able to hold, you know, different applications on the screen at the same time. Whereas beforehand you sort of had to minimize them around and, you know, try and fit them into certain yeah, so windows. Before, so. The kind of like edit two documents side by side. So I've got my budget from uh, 2019 and 2020 here. If I want to do it before, I kind of have to move that one around and make sure you know if it's overlapping, for example, clicks on that, will it hide that one? Um, you wax lyrical about Snap. You love Snap. I've never met anyone that loves Snap as much as you, James, to be fair. Um, <laughs> you've hit the nail on the head. I'm in, in two documents all the time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm ever looking at proposals. I'm ever working on PowerPoint presentations, you know, tender documents. You're kind of going back and forth on pricing, all those kind of things. So for me, it was a big one. Um, but yeah, I won't, I won't steal the thunder, literally just uh, snap that screen down. Snap it. Um, no, yeah, so snap, like I say, you had two screens, that was great. If you're working from one screen, but the smaller screen or smaller device, um, how do you make sure you can have two screens open at once? Uh, well, it's as simple as this. So I've got two different size windows here, but I need to get the information from this one, 2019 to 2020, and I want to be able to read them at the same time. If I just click, I get that little bubble notification. And hit there it's the exact half the screen and then i've got the option to bring up any one of these windows on here so what i can do is i can go personal budget here you see i've got two perfectly side by side windows i can click on that one and interact with that one i can click on there and interact with this one it doesn't just work with two screens if i want it to work with three applications for example what I can do is i can drag it to the and i can put Spotify in there for example so you can see that I've got my Spotify here, I've got an Excel here. And again, if I want to then do that on that side, you can have up to four screens showing at any one time. Um, Snap is really handy. Again, for me, um, if I'm making a PowerPoint, I'm always normally referencing it from a website or referencing it from uh, another source or another PowerPoint. So being able just to have, without having two screens open, just bang, snap, snap, everything's on there. So like I say, all you got to do to do that is open up what you want um, and you literally just drag the window. So you, you drag it to the side, until you get it like pop, and it just puts it in half and you want to open on the other side yeah and as i said you know you love it yeah i got a big, a big time for it and i think it's hopefully you know you know this necessarily isn't groundbreaking potentially some people on here but if you're not aware of it you could do that you know it was one of those things and <laughs> since since working it for me just as you say being able to work quicker you know i think that's kind of the the tips we've covered there just in that productivity session you know talk about timeline going back through looking at actually the documents you've been working on having multiple desktops mm -hmm. so you can't protect yourself when you're you know screen sharing those kind of things um that notifications so that you're always up to date you know you just can go to one point where you've either been you know prime example here you know i can see my notifications ticking up but, but because we're in presenting mode obviously it's not coming up on my mm -hmm. screen so after we've had this webinar for an hour, I need to just go somewhere quick and find out what I've missed. And then as you said, yeah, Snap exactly. being able to look at more documents together. So fingers crossed there was some good productivity yeah. stuff in that one. And I think, you know, the yeah. fact that we're doing a lot about this as being sort of sharing things, a lot of people are using Teams. And I think, you know, that's that leads us potentially quite nicely into our kind of collaboration section around Teams. Exactly. So let me just open up my Teams here, go to our meetings. Um, now, what we could do, everyone's used Windows, you know, 99.9% .9 of businesses use Windows. We're not going to teach you stuff that's going to like revolutionize the world on this call. But hopefully, like James hit the, the nail on the, on the head there, um, is that actually, if we can save you just a minute a day from doing something that's going to add up, if we can save you frustration on it, this is where we can really sort of start changing the way we work on it. But Teams is an incredible example of this. So. Couple of things in Teams that I don't know if everyone knew we could do, but we're just gonna run through. So I'm gonna quickly just start a meeting for myself. Flying solo, um, and let's just have a look. So we're gonna turn webcam on, we're gonna make sure that's on, and then uh, audio, uh, I'm just gonna join. Okay, so hopefully now. Oh, 
I am with myself. Uh, I'm just going to change my settings. Uh, again, we need to with the work. Losing your audio quality there, Dan, a bit, unfortunately. Can you is it your network connection, unregrettably, I think. You, you're back now, I think, Dan. Ah, so I see what's happening there. I think because I joined the Teams call and we're, we're sharing at the same time, uh, it just kicked off my audio straight away. So let me try and do that one more time. I'm going to turn my audio off so it doesn't, uh, there's going to be no audio that's syncing on here. So give me two seconds. If we join this now. Is that? Yeah, we've got your audio down, but I think it's just obviously the bandwidth, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's just talk through what we can do on Teams then. So the ability on Teams, Teams has got a couple of functions in, and I'll tell you what I'll do. I've got a couple of videos that I've recorded off this previously. Um, and what I'll do is we'll, um, ping it across to you, um, and maybe if, if everyone that's attended, um, we, we can share that with them, or we can have some like giveaway documents afterwards. Um, you know, If you get in contact with, with XMA and James and the guys there, um, they can send you this out. So there's a couple of things you can do on Teams um, before... You know, I'm, I'm kind of gutted we couldn't do this uh, demo on it now. Um, if I just press the meet now button, um, I'm not going to go live on it. There's a few things that you can do here. So, um, James, is my is, is there because I've not gone live on this at the moment? Is everything yeah. working fine? Just yeah. yeah. Well, okay, we'll so talk what to you, mate, and upgrade you. What I can do here is, um, you know, if you have got a busy background at home, if you you've got kids or you live and share, uh, you live with someone else, and actually working in the kitchen. So I know James, where do you work? You don't have like a dedicated office room, do you? No, I mean you might have noticed at the start of the call, I'm literally kind of sat in our sat in our bedroom. Um, as I said, I'm, it's very much for me either trying to work in the kitchen. I've got two two twin daughters that are nearly four, so I do have to usually lock myself away. So it is. Uh, a big one for me is that kind of blurred background piece, yeah. Yeah, so literally when you're in a Teams call, if you press that button there, what you can actually do is you can just add it onto your background. So you can see now that anything distracting is disappeared. And that's really handy. Again, if you've got, I call it a dynamic background going on in the sense that, you, like you say, you might have kids, you might have people you live with. Um, we're not in the office environment. You can just hide your background on there. And all you have to do is hit the blur button. Um, and you can literally just blur out everything that's going on. And then you can turn it on, turn it off. You can even add your own ones in. You know, so there's a couple in there. So if you want to be, I, I don't know, let's have a look. Something like this, for example, you can hit um, add it and you can now have like your funky backgrounds on there. You can add custom ones on as well. So if, if you do have your goes or you do have your branded company stuff, you can whack that on there and just make it look a lot more professional when you are doing that Teams meeting. It takes it all out and it's got noise cancelling in the call as well. It's a little tip on there. Now, we can't show it on there because apparently every time I try and uh, join the meeting, um, it does it, but what Teams has, Teams has a really great functionality. Now, if you press the record button in the meeting itself, so you start a meeting, hit the options and press record, the whole meeting gets recorded. Now, I don't know about you, James, how many times have you had to duck out of meetings earlier? You've just missed meetings for whatever reason, or you've had people on the team. It's quite frustrating when you've got to kind of fill them in, especially if it's like a three hour meeting, right? Or you've got to take notes on it. Yeah, definitely so. Yeah, so the record function, press record, and it records everything that's happened. It records everything that's being shared on the screen. It records everyone that's talking in between, et cetera, et cetera. But also as well on Teams, there's a little button on there that says close captions. If you press close captions, what it does is it will close caption and put the subtitles automatically on everyone's screens at the same time. Mm. That's great. Again, James, I don't know about you, sometimes uh, if, if you're looking after the twins, um, you might not be able to have the audio on. If you are sort of like making sure they're okay or, or doing lunch or whatever, but you can still watch along and, and with the, the captions at the bottom, see everything that's going on. But where that really comes into its own is if we go on to something called streams. Now, when you um, when you have a, a video call, when you have a Teams call uh, and you record it, it gets saved onto Microsoft Stream for free. And you can see here is all the recordings I do. So there's everything Thorgood, uh, Thorgood here. What I can do is I can go on and I can see um, the, the meeting that we had um, a couple of weeks ago. And actually, you can see here that here's the exact transcript of everything that was said between us. You know, so we can go down, you can start looking at things, we can look at the interactivity. And um, so we want to talk about things we can. But actually, what you, we've got then is, is a full video that you can download. 
Um, I can download it from um, Teams itself um, onto there. I can download it onto my hard drive. I can upload it onto OneDrive. Um, but the best bit is I can send it to you. So if I've got a meeting with Charlotte, for example, um, and you can't make it, James, rather than going, oh, well, let me catch you up on everything, I can literally go, here is everything that you need. Like literally, here is everything that you need on here. Just watch it back, read the transcript. Really, really handy. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things where, as you said, for people to catch up with it, that, that, that transcripts and captions, if there's a particular mm -hmm. section within a three hour video that you want to go back through, you can scroll yeah. to it and do it that way. So I think exactly, for my yeah. perspective, having those meetings recorded, jotted down, you know, I, I think I've got into the habit of, you know, literally being able to, to record all of my meetings. And I think it's also one of those things to, to play it back to yourself as well. Um, I think yeah, I can just see on that. Accountability, well. just to be in the office, you know, we can sit in the office and go, hey, uh, can we do this? Can we do that? What did we say we were doing about this project? Or we've got the webinar, what are we talking about? Well, actually, I'll just watch back the video. I can literally scroll to that exact moment in time and go, oh, yeah, we talked about this. We said we were doing this. You yeah. know, and again, and again, see on that transcript, we were, you know, when we did talk about some of the stuff previously, you know, the fact that actually those closed captions, the fact that it's coming in using the kind of AI. Um, within Azure, actually, obviously Cortana's skills now is actually they're bringing in translation. So as you said, mm. you know, you could be presenting in English, and if it's a global company, you would like them to obviously the, they say the I think we talk about it there, but the, you know, the German company, um, if they were yeah. watching it back, they could just watch it either on mute with the closed captions, and it would actually translate it live as well. So again, a feature within Teams, you think I've got it's translation you know, software technology. Um, mm. So a big thing that I wasn't aware of. Yeah, so that, that isn't actually live at the moment. That will be coming soon as a feature in, in, in you know, one of the, the next kind of updates on there. Um, but like I say, yeah, the AI on there, and, and it's actually seamless. So the ability to kind of work cross cross countries now and cross, um, yeah, cross regions is, is something really cool. And again, it's hosted for free on, uh, all you got to do is type Microsoft Stream. It's part of your, it comes included in, um, in your M365 package there. So again, chat to James, find out a bit more about that on kind of the actual product side, but everything's free and it's all included. And it's just a really, really handy thing to have. Like I said, I just like recording everything just so I can send it to people to watch back. Now, I think that kind of leads up into, go on, sorry. Oh, no, I was gonna say, yeah, it kind of leads into the, how, how once you've got this document, how can you share it? I think that's obviously one of the things I was gonna say. So kind of obviously on the one on the OneDrive sort of stance of it now. Yeah, so we're going in. So first of all, um, if we wanna share this, um, this is because it's hosted in the cloud. Um, Microsoft has something called OneDrive, and OneDrive is their cloud-based um, office uh, office memory, or office storage. And what it is is you get a terabyte of storage allocated to your uh, M365 account or Microsoft 365 account. And what OneDrive actually is is you've probably seen it across you know the last few years. It sits as a folder on your desktop. What actually is it? Well. Everything is hosted in the cloud, and when you access it, you're only kind of accessing it through the internet unless you save onto your desktop. Now, because the way that Microsoft licensing works uh, for Microsoft 365 or M365 is that for every license you get, you can install it on up to five PCs or Macs, um, five tablets, and five smartphones. So at any one time, you can have 15 devices connected to your one license, which means that, for example, if I'm on this PC here now, and I want to make a change to a document. For example, I'm going to open up, um, let me go into my other desktop. Uh, where are we, task view? I'm going to go on server uh, 2020. And I want to change that to Windows Server 2019. Now, normally, what I'd have to do is I'd have to hit file, I'd have to hit save, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I have to email it to myself or put it on USB stick or Dropbox or, or Teams or something like that. Actually, now I don't have to have to save it. Because I saved this file to OneDrive, there's a little button at the top called autosave, which means every single change that I make on this document gets autosaved and straight away uploaded on, onto OneDrive. But what do I mean when I say OneDrive? Well, if I close this down, for example, and then I go onto my folders here, you can see that actually we've got something called OneDrive and it sits just here. Now I've got my personal one and my Microsoft one. We're going to click on my Microsoft one. So if I hit on OneDrive, now we remember my PowerPoint document, I didn't do anything to it. I literally made a change and closed it down. If I hit on my thing here, you can see that actually there's a document that we made an edit to, which is Windows Server L100 v2. It was automatically saved at 11.29. But the beauty of this and how OneDrive is and how we can share documents you know, between our own users is that actually what I can do is, is because I've made that change and I can have it save, if I turn on my work laptop, which is in the other room, and I open it, what well, on, on my desktop will be that document that I've just edited. On my OneDrive folder, that document will have the changes on. 
now before kind of COVID and pre-lockdown, um, I spent a lot of time going up to London and actually always having a laptop open on, on a train isn't always feasible, but I could still work. So I can edit on my phone because I can put M365 or Office onto my phone. I've got it on my phone and I'm editing away and I hit save. But when I get to my customer's site and I open my laptop, the save version's already there. You know, it just allows this ecosystem to perfectly sync to any one time. Um, and how does that kind of sort of sit in with, with you guys? Because I know that you know, moving from an office to home, some people didn't have work laptops. They had towers and they've had to start using new laptops. How, how have you seen it or how have any chats you've had with people? I think the thing for, for, for our guys, but obviously when we were using it kind of in the office, people were saving it, as you say, using it as a native drive. And then it wasn't really, people didn't see the strength of it until they sort of got home. Um, yeah. And it was a case of going to office.com. So I think, again, that's the other example is you didn't even have to have office installed. So, you know, prime example I've used before, I've been working on a presentation, my laptop's died, I've just been lazy and I've grabbed the nearest other laptop, which might be my wife's, and I've gone to office.com to carry on. Do you know what I mean? I think that's yeah. the, the, the of that is you said it's i haven't got to email that to me i haven't got to transfer it over I haven't got as you say stick on the usb stick, all those kind of things it's just always there and that always on feet well the auto save features definitely saved me as i said earlier about the uh, the twin the twinados as i call them the daughters um you know yeah. i was working on a presentation 30 seconds of looking the other way and i come in and they're you know playing musical keyboard um and it's kind of deleted half my powerpoint presentation so yeah again being able to go back into that version of having the old version of the uh, you know, auto save windows you know document and this little thing as well, like, you know, Outlook, the, the, the file size is 30 meg. You cannot send a file bigger, file bigger than 30 meg on Outlook, right? You, you never used to be able to. And the amount of times I've gone to send PowerPoints or Excels or something that's a big file, you can't do it. And it's quite frustrating because I then have to either make it smaller or upload it to like WeTransfer or my SharePoint or something. Now, if I want to send you a file, James, all I've got to do is right click on that file. Um, or for example, this one, you know, yeah, we'll do this one. We'll click on here. Um, all I have to do is hit the share. The share button and you see this file box opens up and all i've got to do is i can type your email address in so if i just type in james um or yeah, anyone or anyone at all i can either send it as an email um, and i can change it as well so i can say people in microsoft can edit it or anybody with a link can edit it or i can say that actually it's going to be a read-only version and you can't edit it and you're not allowed to download it you can only look at it on the screen and then close it down or i can just make it specific people and i just pop the email address hit apply i'm done I don't want to do that i just go copy link and i've got a link i can copy that and send it to you on teams and you've got a link to it so actually sharing files now has become so much easier you don't even have to open it anything at all right click and then you're done so it just again, works you know it gets saves time yeah, just yeah as you said saving that time of being able to share that document whereas beforehand you may have to open outlook find remember where you saved it drag it in copy it paste it in or you know get it that way in so um yeah as you say just being able to share you finish the document, you know where it is, and you can and share it, share it from there. It's a big thing. Now, I'm going to kind of whiz through this now because I'm quite cautious of time in the sense that I've probably got a 10 minutes worth of stuff to go through. And we're getting some cool stuff as well now. Um, and but I do want to show you office.com very quickly. So if you go to office.com, um, this is your kind of online hub for everything that you do. You know, And this is where OneDrive really comes into its own. Um, office.com, you can see that everything I work on, every document I work on, every file I've opened, every file I've looked at, collaboration files, you can see my colleagues edited the file here, my, my colleague yesterday edited a file, things we're working on together, it appears here. Every one of my folders that's included on OneDrive appears here. All my SharePoints that I go on is included here. I don't even have access to my device to be able to do that. And why is that important? At the moment, we've got you know an environment where we might be working and places you know some people go back to the office some people aren't some people are working from home some people didn't take a device with them they're working on their own devices well actually click on here it means you're never without there's no downtime or anything and even if i want to open out on outlook here it opens a full version of outlook for me if i want to open word it opens the web version i can go and open up um documents that i've worked on you know i can see 25 minutes ago i opened this and it shows me I, I can click and edit again if i click on it there it brings up the web version of it and I can actually go through and still work on it. So the whole beauty of OneDrive and collaboration is because it's hosted into the cloud, actually you've got access no matter where you are. And from a customer's point, if we're looking at, hey, you know, what's the ultimate return on investment is to never be without your, your business, um, your functionalities. And actually what Microsoft are doing is saying, no matter what you're doing this on, whether it's a tablet, phone, laptop, gaming PC, tower, Surface Studio, whatever you need, you are literally ready for it. And you can, you can just access that's whatever you want it's really cool it is really cool from there and i think that also gives us into um 
I think one of the things, obviously, a lot of people working, as you said, that people are working remotely, um, they're potentially a little bit further away from IT. So being able to obviously ask those questions um, kind of around you know, how, how can I get this stuff sorted or set up or shared, those kind of things. The fact that some of these features are now just available to, to our end users is a big thing. Um, and I, you know, and, I, and so in terms of those kind of, you know, um, collaboration tools, aka using OneDrive to be able to share a document, work on a document together, you know, being able to record and, you know, kind of get the closed captions on your team meetings. Again, we, we hope that these, these kind of things we're discussing are takeaways for people to go, oh, I didn't I realise I could do that. Or actually, you're right, if I start using that more, you'll see those benefits. Yeah. Um... Yeah, you, sorry, I was reading through the chat at the same time you're doing that because uh, someone was saying I had some some issues on there. Um, but but no, I think if I just go back even further from what you said there, you've hit the nail on the head in the sense that people are further away from IT, right? And I'm sorry for kind of going on on a tangent here, but um, security is one of the biggest things I want to talk about, and I'm very conscious we've only got an hour to do this. Um, so no, no, I'm gonna no. jump on, jump on the stuff. security side. Um, just being away from IT is a scary thing, you know. You turn your laptop on, there's an error popping up. You turn your laptop on and something uh, might be running a bit slowly, or your battery's not lasting as long as it was, we had a couple of blue screens, what can we do? Well, actually, if we click down here onto the, uh, the Cortana box and I type in uh, security, there's now a Windows security application. And if I click on that, um, I can go on. You can see that I've got a top overview of everything that's going on. I can see that my virus and threat protection, I've got a green tick, account protection, firewall and network, app and browser, device security, et cetera, et cetera. Everything's green ticking here. But let's kind of look into each one of these. Have you seen this before, James? Did, did you know, I know there's one of the features that you, you, you really enjoyed using, I think, re recently. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, there's a couple of things in here. So uh, my, my example of this, if we go into the account protection tab, yeah, sure. um, is, the, um, is this dynamic lock. So to explain dynamic lock to everybody, um, essentially it's a way that you can sync um your bluetooth devices to your to your laptop like you normally would either your headset or your fitbit watch or your or your mobile phone and with dynamic lock it basically means if you leave the bluetooth kind of vicinity you know a couple of feet within your laptop it will actually lock your screen automatically so you know i joked about i said obviously the kids kind of getting involved and you know deleting all my kind of my documents or whatever it may well be i've set this up now for my bluetooth and my fitbit which is obviously always on my wrist so if i walk away from my laptop it actually locks the device um, and you think, yeah, that's a great, great case study for, you know, med meddling children, but also actually from a security perspective, you know, you know, we, even if we're back in the office, I think that's a great thing that people could just go in and turn on. Real simple, real user, end user tool to basically say, yeah, well, of course, we always need to do Windows, you know, Windows L to lock our screens when we leave the leave, leave our desktop unattended. But actually, you can have it do it automatically for you. Yeah. The, and, you, you know, you, you, you've hit it there. It, and it's so easy to do. All you do is you go. Uh, dynamic lock settings and um, if you haven't got a set up it'll just say set up a bluetooth device and you pair your bluetooth device the same as you would anything so you just type in bluetooth down there it does it all for you um, and then the dynamic lock it's just handy you know and, and we joke about it at work because you know if people leave their laptops open it used to be change your facebook status or uh, you know turn their screen upside down or just do something to the laptop but actually now yeah. you know if we're working in shared workspace or the whole focus on gdpr security actually it's just a double backstop for you there that you know if, i don't always lock my laptop i'll just fold it down and walk away or i'll sometimes i'll just pop off and get a coffee and then get sidetracked but actually just having that you know as soon as you get six or seven feet away your account's locked out like literally that, that is, that's a really cool feature um, and obviously on the account protection as well you've got the windows hello um, so i know that most people probably will have seen the word window hello and will know that it's facial recognition um yeah. windows hello is a little bit more than facial recognition um, so Windows Hello is just basically a more secure way than using a password to reset uh, to access your PC. And if I go in here, you can see that I've got my face set up for Windows Hello at the moment. So all I have to do is look at my screen, bang, and it's done. However, the one thing about using facial recognition on Windows Hello is it always has the infrared camera on. And if you've got your laptop running all day without a power source, you will notice that your battery will drain a little bit quicker. So what you can do with Windows Hello, there's a whole load of other stuff you can do. So you can have your facial recognition, um, or you can have biometrics, so you can have your thumbprint, fingerprint, or anything like that. Most devices will have that on in some form or the other. Um, and if you do want to know if it has, all you've got to do on your device is click here and it will say this option is currently available or unavailable. What you can also do is have a PIN number, uh, a security key. Um, so for us, for example, we use USB sticks quite a lot. Um, so I can't unlock my device without a USB stick in it if I'm visiting customer sites, etc. Or you can just use your account's password. 
So depending on what you want at the moment, on, on kind of how you want to sign in, um, you can do it on there. Mm -hmm. Windows Hello, kind of a bit of an easy one on that one. Um, and then again, your account protection, um, you can see everything about your account. So if I click on here, for example, um, on the account, it would just bring up, you know, who's on the family account, um, who's got access to it, passwords, et cetera, et cetera. That sort of thing. Most people have seen that, but now it's just in a single hub that everyone can uh, that access quite easily on that. Um, now, I think on, on the left-hand side as well, there's another one as well, um, app and browser control. Right Now, this is quite cool. If you turn your laptop on and one day it starts running a bit slowly, there's either two things. You've either got an application that's causing it to run slow uh, or you've got a storage issue. Right, and that is as simply as it. And it might be the apps are a newer apps running on hardware, whatever reason, you want to be able to see what's going on. So with the app and browser control, um actually no, we'll go on device and performance health for that one. If we click on device and performance health, sorry, you'll you'll be able to see that um there's three green ticks on there. You've got Windows Time Services, you've got storage capacity and apps and, and software. If you have downloaded an application off the web or software from the web or the store and it's causing your system to run slow, it will tell you what the name of it is. So you can uninstall it. Again, working from home, you're far away from IT. You might, IT might have ridiculously long wait times. Our wait times now for our agency are like two hours to speak to someone. So actually you can just have a little self-diagnosis and go, oh, do you know what? I downloaded Spotify, it's making my laptop run slow. I'll just uninstall it, problem solved. Exactly yeah. the same with storage as well. If your storage is running low, it will tell you your storage is running low. And what can you do? Move everything to OneDrive. You've got terabytes of space in there anyway. One terabyte of storage and OneDrive migrate your files to OneDrive, free up your device on there. It just makes it I easy. Think, I think again, yeah, you said it, you said it there. The fact that it actually allows the end user to do some self-diagnostics before kind of contacting IT. You can actually hmm. tell them there might be some things there that you can't fix, you know, or you don't have the privileges. But at least you can then go to IT and say, I've had this issue. I've looked here. I think it's this, and it kind of obviously just helps get the resolution quicker. Oh yeah, massively, yeah. Um, okay, and, and kind of sort of lastly on this, you know, we won't look at the firewall network protection or the virus and threat protection, uh, but actually, if we go to the app and browser control, um, working from home has its own risks in terms of going on the internet and, you know, phishing is becoming more more sophisticated, keystrokers, key loggers, um, everything like that is becoming more sophisticated to try and get your data. So all people want to do is get your data. There's also a lot of malware that's been downloaded off the back of scripts, off of websites, et cetera, et cetera. How can we protect ourselves or our family members or our kids when they're using our devices that we might use for work? You know, I've got quite a few friends that have their laptop for work, but actually their, their partners use it as well, or their children use it. Well, how can we make sure they're not going to download a file that's, that's going to do some damage to the PC? Three little cool things on here. Um, Windows Defender Smart Screen um, is the first one. So all it does, any application or file from a web that you download, whether it's a, a download, whether it's a um, sort of a script or anything, it will either block it, so you can say, do not download that. It will warn you and say, are you sure you want to open this or do you want to run a virus protection? Or you can just disable it altogether, right? Really, really handy. It sounds stupid, but the amount of times that I've downloaded stuff from a website, um, whether it's like an MP3 file or a video editing file, and it just goes, this is an untrusted source. Make sure you run a virus protection on it. And you're like, oh, I probably should do that. Next thing, uh, smart screen uh, for Microsoft Edge. So obviously, hopefully everyone's using Edge as a browser. Um, and obviously that now you can put Chrome extensions on there, makes it such a, an awesome experience to run. Um, but smart screen, basically what it is, is that every time you go on a new website, um, it spins the website up almost like in its own little sandboxed uh, virtual machine. Now your user experience is no different. It will literally look to you as if I've got this open here and I'm opening a but what happens is it spins up in a virtual machine. If there's any malware, if there's any viruses, there's anything at all, um, it won't let it infect the rest of the machine. It will give you the warning, it will close the window down, but it will not affect your machine at all. So things like WannaCry attack, the NHS, wouldn't have happened if, if this was running. It would be mitigated against. Yeah. That's one way you can do it in there. But you've also got something called Application Guard. Now, Application Guard. Um, is, is really interesting. It runs in Edge itself. Now, if you are having a shared laptop or you want to kind of protect yourself on a lot of things, if I click on the change application guard settings, I can change all this data. I can say that I can save data when I'm on Edge or I can not save the data. I can't copy and paste. So for example, if I don't want people copying pictures off the internet and posting them back onto the PC or vice versa, you can disable that. 
you can disable printing, you can disable access to the camera and the microphone. So again, if you're working from home and you are working on some you know, quite confidential stuff, or you're having a meeting on Teams, but you don't want anything on Edge to pick up it or any malicious stuff on there, you can disable your camera and microphone through Edge. Again, with the graphics, if you don't want things to run um, too intensive on your machine, you, you can disable it all off. So it's really just about giving you the power to make sure that your machine, you have as much control over the policies, but as the user experience as well. I, I think that it's pretty cool. Like the security stuff is awesome on here. And, and again, I think it's one of those things where is I, you know, I'm not a, an IT you know, manager or engineer. I'm not involved in that kind of element of it. But until you kind of go into the Windows security box, as you said, it's, there's so much we could unpack, you know, and we've only got a sort of limited amount of time. We've only tried to cherry pick some things we think would be really beneficial for people. But I, yeah. I implore people on the call to go in and have a look in there. If you weren't aware of some of the features, or again, it's one of those things where you could look through all the features that are in Windows security and then put together a little mail shot to your end users and be like, actually, we've had a look at this. We really like the look of, you know, the uh, automatic locking, or we actually want to encourage people to start using Windows Hello. Reach out to myself. You know, we've all gone and got some, we can get some great content available to you um, to help kind of build those emails out to, to, you know, to your end, end users. Um, and just again, that education piece, just make them aware that it's in there uh, because it's one of those things that you start looking in there, you know, I, personally, I wasn't, you know, that's kind of, you know, something for me to look at as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, right, I'm going to pass it back over to you, James. I think we've kind of gone through everything that we wanted to tick off on there, really. Um, yeah, perfect. I think it makes sense. Um, I was I was going to hold some of the questions uh, until the end, but I think if we can cover off some of the kind of the questions that have been related to your elements now, Dan. Um, so yeah. if I just go hold one second um so one of the questions was when you were in timeline yes um, it was kind of, uh, how would you know that you're working on the latest version of the document ah right so um it will only ever show the latest document so for example if i work on a file every single friday uh, and i save it when even if i worked on it last friday and i go to timeline to last friday when i click on it it will still show the most recent saved version so it's not a okay. historical version you know, so it's not a daily consecutive, the different iterations of it, it's just the most up-to-date version that you can save on there. Brilliant, okay. So, so that's good, so it's, fine. So it's always, always the latest version, as you said, regardless of when you when you roll back to it, that's, that's good to know. <coughs> exactly, um, yeah. The other, the other question we've got here was around uh, the OneDrive element. Um, yes. And we were asking is, um, do you actually need to have the sync enabled to enable OneDrive? So I guess, can you use OneDrive without having it synced as a, as a shared folder hopefully that's that's the question we're answering there um obviously richard let's yeah, know yeah I, I mean i'm going to try and answer that in the wording that is put um and if it hasn't an answered in the right way reach out to me or james and i'll happily chat to you more on that if you want all your files to automatically sync on you will need to sync everything up and have it as a synced folder if you just want to use it as a shared folder without the syncing then yes you can but the features like auto save won't be enabled so um for example if i work on an excel spreadsheet here um, and I want to save that onto my OneDrive, you can see the auto save is saved off. Now, I don't have sync turned on on my um, my work one, on my personal one, I have it turned on, but not my work one, um, because there's too many files. So what I can do on here is I can go file, um, save as, and I can save it to my OneDrive, um, and I have to save it like that. Um, actually, I'm just gonna update it on there. Um, you can see, so to answer the question, again, I'm gonna turn that off. Um, if you want everything to always, be auto saved you need to sync on and um, if you just want to use it as that shared folder then no you don't have to have sync turned on okay and then i think we just had an update there it says um how do you enable it in quick links so i think uh, when you're i think it's one of those things whereas if um we were looking at you know you had the document you had a document list and you obviously um yes do you need to have, if you wanted to share it do you need to have it obviously within your file explorer i guess is the answer uh, yes is the answer to that one um okay. i'm not i've not fully understand the question on that one that's okay who, 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 yeah we, we if they want to drop your message after that, yeah i'm happy to jump on a call with them after on teams quit or something or just yeah. have an email chat and, and try and answer that better amazing brilliant stuff thanks dan right. cool okay well obviously that kind of covers off on the live demo section guys if i uh if i get control back from yourself down one second I'll put my webcam back on now, so there's no uh, bandwidth issues. No worries at all, guys. Uh, brilliant, thanks for that, Dan. So I guess obviously, you know, we've kind of talked about some of those features that are available within the Windows uh, kind of licensing stack. 
Um, so from my perspective, kind of what I just want to cover off now is obviously my, my business area, which is the, um, the cloud solution provider, kind of the CSP, we would have heard mentioned before. Um, kind of XMA's obviously a proposition for this and how we can help cover people on, um, on their licensing. Um, so a big thing from our perspective is what, what is the CSP? What is cloud solution provider? Um, it's effectively just an agreement from Microsoft that allows us to provide licensing. It provides us to be able to provide support packages to, to uh, our end customers as well and any other products as well. Essentially, it's an agreement. It's a contract that we've created and tailored it especially for our customers. Now, the reasons that we talk about it and what's the benefits within it is actually some of the things we talk about is licensing flexibility. So the big thing on a CSP side is the fact that as, a, as end customers, you have complete control on your licensing flexibility. You can change product, you can change plan, you can change quantity of your licenses. And through the CSP program, it's actually on a daily basis. So you could generally say to me, actually, James, I need some Power BI users and I need them for two weeks. You could effectively sign up to a subscription for that license for those two weeks and then turn it off afterwards. So you don't have to commit to, oh, I think I'm going to need this for, I think I'm going to need a project that might have Power BI, Power BI usage in it and buy it at the start of the year. No, you just need to use it when you use it. And that's my big thing about, from my perspective, when I was talking earlier about, sorry, I just realized I put my camera on. So um, when I was talking about earlier about, obviously my role is making sure people never pay for more than they need to. So a big thing on the CSP is that. Um, we actually have a monthly billing option. And again, that kind of touches on the flexibility point because we are in control of the billing cycle for your Microsoft licensing. We can pretty much do it how you guys would like it in reason. So yes, actually the standard is a monthly billing. So you kind of use whatever you use that month, obviously you get charged for and it kind of as a, as a rolling monthly contract. But actually if you turn around to us and said, actually James, we really like a, you know, an operational uh, expenditure on a monthly basis, but actually our finance guy said, could we pay for it for a year? So we can of course do upfront billing and then it becomes more like a traditional method as well. Um, you might want it in quarters. You know, we could talk have that kind of conversation. So about the billing option, again, being that flexible and, you know, you don't have to use a credit card anymore or obviously do the up for a large front up commitments. Um, and that kind of takes on to the upfront commitments. You know, the fact that not only is that in money, but it's also what technologies I think I'm going to be needing. So a lot of our customers potentially have bought products um, in kind of the Microsoft 365 world and actually some of those components, they haven't even rolled out yet. Whereas we're saying, actually, we could just help you guys with the products that you need now. There's always tipping points in the kind of the, um, the bundles of the SKUs of the licensing. So don't get me wrong, it always comes down to maths. If you kind of want three of the components, you know, within M365, of course it makes sense to buy the suite. But if you're actually only looking at, say, you want Windows 10, Office 365 E3, um, you know, and you're looking at Intune and Azure Information Protection, you can buy some of these components as individual add-ons. So again, just working out your profiling of your users is a big thing that I get involved with our customers to make sure you only license them for what they need. Um, the kind of dedicated support team that comes with this cloud solution provider. So we're very proud to say that we actually have our own in-house in tech support team. Um, so included in your Microsoft licensing costs is that support center. Uh, and that is actually a 24 by seven support team. Um, so we're able to take your calls I'll, uh, on the support process. I've got another slide that kind of talks about how we take that through all the way to third tier. Um, and then the last one there is the licensing expertise. So alongside myself, we've got four other um, uh, people that all, uh, you know, Microsoft certified professional licensing. So our idea is we need to understand kind of what technologies you're looking at, what are you thinking of implementing, and we can advise them, is there a particular product in the Microsoft stack that you either have access to already and could replace a third party bill? You know, I think you mentioned it previously to me that isn't it Windows, is it Windows Defender now is back to the top antivirus thing now it's, yeah, it's so, yeah so um you know individually or independently voted um and analyzed that we have the best antivirus and best threat defender for your device you know built in as one of the, the tools on there so if you think you know that could potentially replace a third party product you know sophos or you know as one of the other kind of malware protection software um you know having that conversation with us to understand it's a big thing, of course. It, we need to make sure that from a technology perspective that it actually does what you need it to do. Like, don't get me wrong, we might well say actually, well, you could install that and then also have the you know specialist third-party product that you need as well, but it might be able to turn down the kind of level that you've got on your third-party one. Um, and then the last one there, LCS yeah, said the licensing expertise, that's kind of where we get involved. So on the dedicated support, I just want to cover that off as, as the next slide, um, just to kind of break down to people how that how that comes through to us. 
Um, so as a customer, obviously, it's included in your CSP licensing. Can't, can't stress that enough. That's just kind of the value add that we bring on the Microsoft licensing on the CSP support there. Um, but the idea is that obviously you raise it through to our support case. Um, so you pass it through to our first line. We obviously take the information, understand obviously what the problem is. We pass it on to our technical support centre. So obviously that goes through to them via a help centre, obviously our email or 24 by 7 if it's a critical uh, problem. Now, we pride ourselves on, I think we've got a success rate of it's about 85%. Of those problems can be fixed in-house so we do third first line obviously and, th and second line on our xma technical support that we look after those problems this is everything in the microsoft stack so this is dynamics this is enterprise ability and security windows 10 azure you know the, the full suite kind of thing um we feel it's covered within your licensing and then what we do actually do is if our guys for whatever may well reason we can't solve it in-house we actually piggyback it off of our own premier support contract so actually by being a csp customer of xma you actually have access to a premier support contract it's basically we work on behalf of you guys so also what's important there is it's not like we suddenly wash our hands we pass it back to you and you have to deal with microsoft we take that problem all the way through to escalation escalate it into microsoft at the right level get the resolution back to you guys and then we're obviously solving that problem on the support issue uh not that there should be ever any problems with microsoft just run out of there we're not preempting any video problems just just throwing that out there right no problems at all and i think obviously it's one of these things that's coming around you know with with again we talk about our licensing expertise microsoft is an ever-changing beast i think dan you know you can sit there and, and completely agree on that front but it's things like this so just to give us a small you know snippet example of, of what's been going on in microsoft's world they've started to remove the word office from from all of their kind of uh, products and SKUs. so you can see here that business essentials became business basic then in a really strange wording they put business premium is now business standard and that made way for Microsoft 365 Business Premium. So a lot of our kind of customers potentially have got that middle kind of uh, line there of the business premium, and they're now wondering why am I called business standard? What's happened? Is any functionality changed? There's no functionality change. It's purely a name change. Um, so that's kind of things happening there. Office, the other classic one is the Office Business Applications. So Office 365 Pro Plus, everybody kind of knew it as that. And that's now being changed to be called Microsoft 365 five apps for enterprise as you can see that's a really snappy title that they put put in there um, but the main thing being is that's obviously the applications there for for the um the enterprise now i will sh i'll show one more slide on this uh, but a big thing from my perspective is the fact this is you know a detailed plan comparison bit of an eye-watering chart and obviously we're going to give you guys this content at the end but for me this is you know just a pure little cheat sheet helps it break down so if you are looking at particular features you know we can we can go through it together with you as an end customer and make sure that you have got the technologies that you want to have for your end users and what's the most cost effective way of buying it that's kind of why i'm here for you guys so as i said i'll share this with you guys afterwards but it's a really good detailed chart kind of goes through obviously all the business plans the enterprise plans and those complete modern workplace plans which obviously include the windows 10 the enterprise mobility and security features and your office applications as well so I'm just going to go on to our last slide here now, guys, because obviously we're close to uh, close to our finish and just check on some of these questions that we've got kind of around my potentially my section or or some other bits. Next. OK, I think we kind of covered the ones um, that were that were brought up, obviously, Dan, in your section. Um, I'm hoping that I fully explained my section, which is why there's the uh, no questions there. Um, but from my perspective, guys, obviously, just want to say thank you so much, Dan, obviously, for all the all the live demoing there and um, battling through no potentially some of the, uh, the roboticness. So, again, apologies for the people on the call if that, uh, if that was affecting you guys at that end. Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah. our main thing being, as I said, you know, Dan, Dan, Dan and I, uh, we're, here, we're here to help in any way, shape or form. So, you know, at the end of this webinar, hopefully, you, you know, you've taken away some information and if there's been a bit of learning along the way. Um, and obviously, if there's any other things we can help with, then, um, then please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Awesome. Thank you very much. I've, I've enjoyed that. And we hit it perfectly for an hour as well. That's, that's we try. Good. As I said, it was uh, nice to get it on their stuff. But um, yeah, amazing. OK, Sweet. guys. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. And um, we'll go from there. Take care. Cheers. Bye.